Hey, did you know that you can run and, and for free 24 7 without paying a single dollar? And no, it's not about hosting it on your own laptop because that means our laptop has to be on 24 7 and that's not good. So we found a way to host it on a server on Google Cloud for absolutely free, always free. So make sure that you watch this video until the very end. First, we're gonna to go to cloud.google.com slash free. In this link, we can study more about what it means for Google Cloud to be free. First, we see that we get $300 in free credits for consumers, but we don't really care about that, do we? We want it to be always free. So let us study more on what it means to get a free tier in Google Cloud. We see that we get one E2 micro instance per month. What does this mean? Let us click and dive deeper into what Google Cloud can actually offer us. Over here, we see the documentations for Compute Engine that we get one E2 micro VM instance per month absolutely for free in three cities, in Oregon, in Iowa, and in South Carolina. And also, we get about 30 GB in terms of memory storage for Compute Engine. What Compute Engine is, is basically a server that we can use. And now, once we have already understood it a little bit more, we're just going to go ahead and create our own server. Let's go to the GCP console. Over here, we see that we are in the GCP console cloud. And now, we see that we do not have any projects available. So, we're going to go ahead and create a new project. I'm going to name our project N8N. And maybe, let's just give it two Ns. Because they require four characters in Google Cloud. Okay, once our whole project has been loading, I think we need to set up our Google Cloud account so that we can use everything correctly. The first thing is that we need to set up our billing. So let's just go ahead and press the start free button at the top right. Over here, we're gonna choose a country. I'm looking in Indonesia, but you can choose whichever country you're based in. This is a burner account, so I will be showing you step by step on how to set it up. First, we need to add a name and address associated with our billing method. Don't worry, we won't get charged, but we still need, we still need to add a payment method. This is so that they know that we are not a bot and we are a real user. We see that we have got a little bit of credit in our account and now we're going to go ahead and actually create the um, instance. So we're going to go ahead in the left side go to compute engine and press the create instance. Here we're just going to enable the API. This gives us a permission to set up a compute engine via the platform, via the web UI of Google Cloud. It usually takes a while, maybe one to five minutes, but I'm just gonna speed everything up so that you can see exactly what I mean. Once um, the instance has already been created, it seems that our computer engine API has been enabled. So now we're gonna go back and actually create our first instance. Okay, now it's very important for us to set up the instance just the way it's intended by the feature. We get a free name, <clears throat> we're gonna choose E2, which is a low cost computing. And then we're going to choose the E2 micro. Now, um, we're just going to go back to the documentation and check if you're correct. So here, yes, it says E2 uh, micro. And then we're going to go ahead and choose the right setup. Once that's done, we're going to go to the settings and we're just going to change because we know that we get 30 GB, but by default, the setting is only 10. So we're just going to um, change the size of the storage that we get. Yes, it's 30 GB in terms of the free storage. So we're just gonna go ahead and change the settings into 30 GB. I don't think so we need to change anything else. We can still stay with Linux. And we need to disable our snapshot because the snapshot actually costs us money. So here we need to be smart when playing with Google, right? Because Google says it's free for just the EC2 as well as the um, storage. But for the backups, we have to pay. So let's just disable it completely. In the right side, we can see that there's some logging and monitoring with cost varies. Let us make sure that we allow all traffic for HTTP, HTTPS because we're going to be accessing NNN from the web. And then let's disable all observability because this is actually additional cost to us for logging and monitoring. We can always back up the data of NNN somewhere else. We can always store it maybe in GitHub, maybe in an Excel file for the logging. We don't always have to use the um, services provided by E2 instance. All right, let's go ahead and create it. And then this usually takes a while. And maybe after a couple of refresh, you should be able to see it. I'm just gonna speed up the whole process so that we can get access. All right, now we have our instance. We have an internal IP, we have an external IP. And now what I really want to do is I just want to connect inside. To do that, we need to press the SSH button. SSH is a way for us to log in inside our server that we have 
got access to from Google Cloud. So we're just going to move things to the left and right so that we can visualize everything better. In our SSH instance, we just have to log in with our Google account and boom, we are connected to our E2 instance. We're going to see that we have an empty folder, just do a quick ls. And then now we want to run edit and using the basic documentation. So I'm just going to try experimenting to see if we actually connect it. I'm going to create a folder, edit in, and just like run a few commands. Now I just want to see if we actually have Docker or not. It seems that the Docker command not found. So we do not have Docker yet. So this is a bunch of commands on the left hand side that I've prepared for you that you can just copy and paste it. Later you can get access to this file from the link in the YouTube video below in the description i'll send you the list of all the commands in a separate file you just need to copy them one by one and what it really means is that we are making sure that we have everything required to run any time we're just going to install the libraries one by one which the most important and the biggest one is docker docker actually is a way for us to run in it and instance without installing everything one by one so we're just going to run um, the docker with the image of nitn.io. This means we are going to go to the docker library, find the image of nitn and then just run it. Once it has finished on the right hand side, you should be able to see the port number. We see that it's available like localhost 5678. So now we're just going to go to our network details of our E2 instance. And we're just going to make sure that we're able to access this from anywhere in the web. To do so, we just need to go to the network settings. So for the interface, we're just going to create a new firewall rule to tell our E2 instance that, hey, we want to access you from any IP address from the whole internet. So we're just going to create a VPC firewall rule. And I think I'm just going to name it something uh, super simple that we can remember. We're going to call it uh, maybe global access. Make sure that there's no space. And then we make sure that we set up the um, target tags below. Yeah, the target tags, we're just gonna make it the default the service account. Okay, and then for the IPv4, we're just going to create an IPv4 range, which is open to the whole internet. When we do 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0, that means anyone in the whole internet can access our main instance. So we're just going to create the new VPC rule, and now we have our whole website able to be excellent public. We have an external IP address, we're just going to copy that. I don't think so anything should load at this point, yeah. So now let's add the port 5678. After we add the port, we should be able to boot our first NNN instance. Alright, let's see. Okay, the NNN server is configured. But NNN only uses HTTPS. That means apart from our basic uh, Docker, we need to set up HTTPS. So now we need to search for IP addresses and we need to make sure that IP address does not change throughout because now we'll be pointing a website to it. So we're just going to create a st static IP address, call it n and we're just going to go with the standard one so we do not pay again. Uh, we're just going to click uh, this static IP address means that the IP address of our server will never change in its whole life. That means we can point a website to it and if it does not change, it's a good thing. But if it changes, then it's very problematic, you see. And this usually takes a little bit. It's pretty much free for us to use. Now that we have a static IP address, I'm just going to open my domain that I have. I'm going to go to Namecheap. I have a website called pinkmatcha.co. And I'm going to configure the advanced DNS so that we can point towards IP address. We're going to create an A record, which points the subdomain nitm into the static IP. We're going to go ahead and save the changes and this should take a few minutes to load meanwhile we can set everything up again okay uh, now that we have for a point our domain now let's go back to the terminal and in the terminal we need to make a few more changes right so we're going to go back and we're going to work on our nginx uh, what is nginx nginx is basically a way for us to point towards um, the http port towards our um, and it end port. So to do so you can open this link that I've provided. It's a simple installation of nginx so that n it end works pretty well. We're just going to copy the commands. It's all thanks to our friend Gogo Soon. So shout out to you for providing the documentation. And we're just going to copy the commands one by one. First we're going to start with installing nginx and then we're going to create a, our own pointing of nginx. We're going to create a configuration and make sure that we use our own server name. 
here I've just added a subdomain of nitn to my website called Pink Matcha. So I'm just going to make the server name nitn.pinkmatcha.co. And later, when we access this website, we should be able to access our nitn. So we're going to press Control X and Yes to go back. And then now we're just going to run a few more commands to save the settings to restart Nginx. And then now Nginx is able to run on port 80, which means HTTP. Now we actually also want HTTPS in our whole system. So we're going to go ahead and install CertPort. CertPort is basically a way for us to sign our um, domain and subdomain to make it HTTPS. So we're just going to go ahead and um, copy paste the commands and we're just going to run it. This asks us to uh, for a yes or no question and if you really want to run it, we're going to run the CertPort command but make sure that we use our subdomain again so here we're going to change your domain.com into nitn.pinkmatcha.co so that we know our new nitn subdomain is signed by https and will be more secured whenever we are accessing it via external websites okay it's going to ask a few questions yes just press number one and then it's going to ask you for if you are ready for it um, usually it asks for an email, then you can just provide. And I think now we have already enabled HTTPS. Great. Now that we have everything running, now we want to run Docker on the background. Just now we were running Docker on the main terminal, but we want it to run even while the system restarts or when the system is booting up. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a NNN Compose folder. All this is based on the NNN documentation, which I've also attached below. Using this documentation, you can basically set everything up. Now we're going to go ahead and create the env file by pressing sudo space nano spa space env file. Uh, sorry, dot env. Here we're going to change our domain name to pinkmatcha.co because that's the domain that we are pointing to this um, subdomain. So we're just going to change it to pinkmatcha.co and at the bottom, they have an SSL email. That means if the security is outdated, who should we contact? Uh, we're going to go ahead and change this to a basic email info at pinkmatcha.co and we're just going to press ctrl x on windows or the associating command on mac and press yes to save all the changes now that we already have an env file we're going to go ahead and create a local files as well so local files is going to store your workflows your credentials and the important information then we're going to create a docker compose file pressing sudo space nano space compose.yaml here is basically the settings that we don't need to change anything just press again ctrl x and save everything by pressing yes so we have all the documents that we need and the only thing left to do is to sudo docker compose up in the previous settings we have also set it so that whenever we restart it's going to run docker again now we're just going to check the whole website and it end pinkmatcha.co and here we see that we have already booted nitn and it's all more secure from before we're going to go ahead and create our own sign up it's basically now just edit and set up like how you have your own account for the first time so you're going to go ahead and set up an owner account and this account has access to read or write or make any changes to edit and and then uh, we don't not going to save anything we're just going to um, answer the details by default Okay, now we have an empty workspace. In the empty workspace, we're just going to test our webhook, which is super important. So I'm just going to create a basic general webhook called API slash test. And basically, these kind of webhooks is just to test whether the connection has been stable or not. We're going to use a respond to webhook node, and we're going to connect it to a response to webhook. And this response to webhook is where we're actually going to reply whoever is accessing this website with something. So we're going to reply them with a simple text. Hey there, the setup is complete to indicate that n is ready. Now we're just going to save everything and turn the whole workflow on so that we can access it through production. And yeah, I think everything looks good. We're going to go ahead and actually open the endpoint. So we're going to copy the production URL, nitn or pinkmatcha.co slash webhook and the setup is complete awesome man the whole thing has been set up successfully using docker using um, our e2 instance and everything is working very well now we're just going to go back and look again at the costs okay um, this is our ip address and we're going to go to the billing section of our cloud google cloud 
In our billing section, we can see that there's no cost incurred. I know when we were setting it up, there was some billings to the right side about seven, eight dollars, but none has been incurred so far. We can see in other places as well. We can see that we have been assigned free credits. There's no top projects, there's no cost uh, so far. I actually use it in my own instance. I use it for about uh, two months now and there's not been enough and there's not been any cost at all but sometimes the service do lag a little bit because it's only getting 2 GB of RAM so if you want a more powerful instance then you can upgrade and pay for many of the services but for now for the feature if you just want to test out and attend it's perfectly free and it's simple for you to use it's actually not quite enough for me because I feel that we still require a lot of computing power but it's enough to get you started into the rabbit hole of AI and automation I hope you enjoyed how to set everything up and really can set it up for yourself. I hope you use Anatent to build amazing automations, amazing AI tools and beautiful workflows for yourself, for your agency, for your company. Do hit the subscribe button below because I share a lot of content regarding automation, regarding blog automation, regarding using the latest AI technology as well as free tutorials like this so many of you developers as well as people who are enthusiastic about AI and automation can give it a try. I really hope this video is um, useful to you. Give it a like and drop a comment below. Thanks a lot.